Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the all new 2025 Indian Scout. We're gonna cover some specs. I'm gonna get you an exhaust clip. We'll get in the saddle and take it for a test ride. And then we'll finally arrive at the end portion of the video, which is where I tell you whether or not this motorcycle right here is a good buy, or if instead you should be saying, Goodbye. The Indian Scout has been a staple in the Indian motorcycle lineup since 2015, known for its classical looks with the blend of modern performance. It's a bike that turns heads with sleek lines, a low slung muscular silhouette, and timeless design elements. The Scout's blend of retro aesthetics along with contemporary engineering make it a standout in the cruiser segment. And because it's able to take from both worlds and blend them together, we have a motorcycle that's attractive to a traditional type of rider as well as the new age buyer. Much of the technical and specification information I'm going to provide in this video can be applied across the entire Scout lineup. Just so you know though, this model specifically is the Sport Scout Limited Plus Tech. We'll talk more about what that entails during the test ride portion of the video, but just want to lay the groundwork so you know exactly what you're looking at. All right, first up on the agenda are some specs. Let's go ahead and just get into it. Suspension on the front of the Indian Scout comes with a 41 millimeter conventional right way up fork with 4.7 inches of travel. In the rear, we find a set of classically styled exposed twin shocks with a progressive spring rate and preload adjustability. These shocks offer three inches of usable travel. Interestingly enough, our brakes are the same size in the front and rear as far as the disc goes. It's a 298 millimeter disc in the front with a two piston caliper. While the disc in the rear is the same size at 298 millimeters, it does just get a single piston caliper. But with the large discs in the front and the rear, we should have more than ample stopping force on this machine. Powering the Indian Scout in 2025 is a brand new engine. It's got new outer covers, it looks a little bit more premium, and it's more powerful. This is a 1250cc 60 degree V-twin. And this bad mamma jamma is cranking out 82 foot pounds of neck snapping torque, along with 100 five screaming horsepower. This generation motor is an upgrade over the previous 1133cc engine from the old Scout, which made 78 foot-pounds of torque and came in at around 100 horsepower. Transmission in the Scout is a six-speed setup with a wet multi-plate clutch. The Indian Scout is certainly not the lightest bike on the scale. Coming in at 548 pounds, which from what I've gathered doesn't weigh quite as much as your mama. But in that weight figure, we have to consider the seat height and how low the bike sits because it has a great center of gravity. And that seat height comes in just over two feet tall at 25.7 inches. I'm six foot one with a 32 inch inseam and a 33 inch waist. I weigh in at 185 pounds. And this is how I fit on the 2025 Indian Sport Scout. I'm on the taller side, but even most average size individuals are gonna be able to comfortably plant both of their feet on the ground on this motorcycle with plenty of bend to their knee so they can feel plenty stable whenever they're standing still on the motorcycle. The rider triangle on the standard Scout is a little bit more relaxed than this with bars that are pulled back and low. But on this Sport Scout model, we have a six inch riser with a moto style handlebar and the forward controls, which give us a really commanding rider triangle. I'm nice and I'm upright. My feet are positioned out forward in front of me and my hands have a great reach to the bars. As you can see, as I bring my hands from a relaxed position down here and up into the bars, it's right where I want them. This is the sweet spot for me specifically. And with the forward controls, I've got some pretty decent room up here. For someone my height, I'd probably like them out just a little bit further to have a little bit less bend in my knees while I'm on the bike. But overall, this feels comfortable and I feel confident. We have a lot more to talk about out on the test ride. Before we get out on the test ride though, I gotta get you an exhaust clip. So let's have a listen. Now it's time to go for a test ride. Let's kick it. And our test ride segments take place at none other than the complex of Big St. Charles Motorsports and Big St. Charles Harley-Davidson. 
Prior to getting out on the actual roadways with the Indian Scout, we're going to do what every rider should do with a brand new motorcycle, and that's get acquainted with it at low speed first. Get acquainted with your brakes, get acquainted with the friction zone and the clutch. Just learn the bike a little bit for at least five minutes before you get out on the roadways to make sure you know where all your functions are at and how the bike responds whenever you do your general input. So what we're going to do is ramp it up to 30 miles per hour and then jam on the brakes, try to figure out where they really like to bite. Hmm. A little bit of interference from our ABS system. A nice progressive pull on the lever. Not a ton of initial bite, but good progressive bite feel as we squeeze and apply more force. Yeah, that's, that's some very ample stopping power with those 298 millimeter discs up front and in the rear. Let's try to go rear brake only and get a feel for that one specifically. A lot of ABS interference on that rear brake, but it is preventing us from locking up and skidding our rear wheel. All right, let's go front brake only. Still very good stopping force. It's a pretty long wheelbase at 61 inches, so our handling and tipping in is a little lazy. It's almost like you ask it to do it, and then it does it. There's a split second before it really is compliant with you. But the trade-off there for that long wheelbase is stability at speed, and a great weight distribution as well. Not to copy Mr. Zach Quartz from Revzilla, but I I'm going to try a footless stop. Let's see if we can do it with the scout. Let's go stop. No feet. Oh! Didn't have to pee our feet down. 33 degrees of lean angle means that we have about half the usable lean angle of a Super Sport 1000 cc motorcycle, but this is a completely different style of motorcycle, so we don't need a ton of lean angle. This is a cruiser. All right, last thing before we get out on the road, the two parking spot test. We're just gonna try to keep this turning radius contained within two parking spots. All right, gotta hang the back brake, ride the friction zone, and find that sweet spot in the throttle. Here we go, and we're off. Nope. Had to put my foot down there for a second, lost a little bit of confidence in myself, but we got it back. And yeah, this is a two parking spot machine, no problem. Yep, we've got this. We got this all day. That's easy claps. All right, now it's time to hit the actual real world testing. Before we get out there, I want to point out our full color TFT 4 inch ride command display. This has our ride modes, our traction control, our GPS. We can even pair our phone to it. If our headset and our helmet has music capability, we can take phone calls, check a bunch of notifications, and it's got a bunch of great data readouts in it too. We can even change the way it looks, which is pretty cool. So we can get something that's a bit more informative, or we can go for that minimalist approach with the speed and the tachometer, the two most important things whenever you're trying to get acquainted with your machine and understand what's going on. We are in rain mode right now. We're gonna go ahead and switch that into standard mode. It's as easy as tapping right there and hitting up here. The screen is glove friendly as well. So love to see that. The Indian Scout for the new model year still feels very, very similar to the previous generation. We have a couple revisions to the frame, but in terms of how the bike feels overall, it did not lose what it had going for it. And I'm on the Sport Scout Limited Plus Tech, which is why I've got this great dash. And the Sport Scout has a few other added amenities like the six inch risers with the moto style bars and that billet clamp. You also get that shroud up front you get a more slender profile wheel up front that's 19 inches in diameter. You get a more premium seat, which is called the Syndicate seat. It's got a nice little scoop in the rear so you don't feel like you're getting slid out of it as easily as something like the Bobber style seat. And the Sport Scout, if you're looking for older model years, you're gonna look at what's called the Scout Rogue. This motorcycle is the exact same thing as that bike. It is just wearing a new badge and a new name. In my last video, I rode a Honda Shadow, and I talked a little bit about how if you wanted a bike that was similar to the Shadow, but was a little bit more rowdy, the Indian Scout was the bike you should be looking at, and I could not have been more right about that. This feels very Shadow-esque, but something about it just feels more chipper. Definitely way more power. 
It only has 500 more cc's, but we're making more than double the available horsepower that the Shadow had. We're picking up an extra gear and we've got gobs of torque. And on the scales, this bike only weighs like between five and 10 pounds more than the Honda Shadow, which in my opinion is kind of embarrassing for the Shadow. <laughs> That's super overweight and underpowered. And speaking of the Shadow, another thing I mentioned during my last ride with that motorcycle was the tank on it. I called it a dinner table because it's so big and square and just like, here you go, here's a gas tank, I guess, where the Indian Scout has much more of a taper to it. You don't feel like you're spread so wide on a Scout. It's, it's much more slender profiled. And I can really appreciate a bike that takes that much thought into the ergonomics. The Scout also has a very tall gearbox. These gears are very, very long. First gear goes clear past 60 miles per hour before you hit redline. And for general cruising around town, I'm finding myself in second, third, and fourth. The only time I feel the need to go into fifth or sixth is on the interstate. And with as tall as the gears are, you can even get on the highway at 70 miles per hour, drop down into third, and open the throttle, and have awesome passing power and we'll show a little bit of that whenever we get out on the interstate but that's definitely one thing to kind of prepare yourself for is the taller gears of this motorcycle some of the low displacement beginner sport bikes have pretty quick and short gears that don't ring out super far so this is a, a weird change of pace if you're not used to something like that and i know i touched on it back in the parking lot but because our silhouette is so long and low and our rake is so far out in front of us the handling of the Scout is not as sharp as a sport bike, which should be apparent immediately upon looking at this motorcycle. But it is something to keep in mind. And even with that said, the Scout is pretty flickable. Like, you can dip it in and out of turns pretty easily with not a lot of fighting back. Now, the suspension, on the other hand, is not the most plush and forgiving. With 4.7 inches of travel in the front forks, that's fairly competitive with a lot of, you know, standard street bikes. But the three inches of travel in the rear is what kind of hurts you. Can we do another footless stop? Zero. Oh, let's go. Didn't put our feet down. Dear Revzilla, if you're watching this, please please consider bringing me on. I think I'm entertaining. I think I would do well for your channel. I like motorcycles. I like riding them and reviewing them. I could bring some, some value. Sure, I'm not as experienced or as qualified as some of you guys out there, but I've got heart. And isn't that good for something? No. Hmm, the, <laughs> the exhaust has some pops and bangs. Hmm. And for those who are returning viewers, you recognize this strip of road because this is usually where on sport bikes we'll determine if we can pick the front tire up off the ground in motion or if our cruiser counterparts that aren't too fond of bringing one tire in the air will see if maybe they can get a little rowdy and roast the rear tire to do a little, little burnout action, you know what I'm saying? So here in a second we're going to peel off get out of traffic's way, make sure we're not impeding anyone's day or the flow of traffic, and we're going to try to, you know, do a little on the back tire, because I know the Scout can do it. She's a rowdy girl. It's got plenty of torque, over 80 foot-pounds available at the, the twist of a wrist, and at 6,300 RPM, that's where it makes its peak. So we're going to try to get the RPMs in there, get that good wheel speed, and really get this thing turning and burning. Hey, thank you so much for tuning into this video. I'm sorry to interrupt it, but I have to give a big thank you to the guys that make this possible. It's our dealership partner, Big St. Charles Motorsports. Big St. Charles Motorsports is your premier dealer for everything power sports related here in the Midwest. Located just 20 miles northwest of St. Louis in St. Charles, Missouri, Big St. Charles Motorsports easily has the most inventory and the most brands under one roof. You really will have a hard time finding a bigger selection than what Big St. Charles Motorsports offers. Whether it's the apex predator of the top of the line road going motorcycles, a big touring machine from someone like Indian Motorcycle, or just something in the off-road category from Gas Gas, KTM, Yamaha, Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki, Can-Am, it doesn't matter. They've got it all under one roof. 
but it doesn't just stop at the machine. Their parts, apparel, and gear department is stellar. Whether you're looking at something from Shoei, Bell, Fox, Alpine Stars, the employees that work here are sure to get you steered into the right direction. They'll make sure to get you fitted into something so you can rep your favorite brand. Come down and visit them today. Located at 3830 West Clay Street, St. Charles, Missouri. Find them online at BigStCharlesMotorsports.com or give them a call directly at 636-946-6487. Big St. Charles Motorsports and Omnimoto are not affiliated in any other capacity outside of these test ride reviews. If I say something stupid, please don't blame Big St. Charles. We got to test it. We got to make sure that it's fun. So we're going to switch it into sport mode. We're going to turn our traction control off. Yeah, are you sure you want to disable traction control? Disable. <laughs> they want none of this on their hands if things go awry. So, all right, let's just give traffic a minute to get by. And while I sit here and wait, I'm going to talk to you guys for a second. Uh, I am wearing a Bionic Action V2 jacket from Alpine Stars. This jacket that I bought was $180. I think the price might have gone up to $220. I don't know. But if you want one for yourself, if you want something that's breathable while also being protective, something that is going to suit better for summertime riding than a full-blown leather jacket, this is a good alternative. Keep in mind, it's not as safe as full leather, but something is better than nothing. You can also get the Alpine Stars SMX2 Air V2. There's, there's so many letters, it's like alphabet soup with these things. There's a link in the description for both my gloves and my chest piece. And if you want a helmet like the one on my head, this is a Rurock Atlas 4.0. The one that I was wearing in the walk around is the Rurock EOS. Again, links in the description for these. I am an affiliate for both Revzilla and Rurock helmets. If you guys make a purchase using my links in the description below, I may be financially compensated. It's the best way to support my channel since I don't do any memberships or anything like that. All right, you know what? We're just gonna try to get this done. Here we go. Go from a slow roll, clutch in, revs up. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's pretty sick. That is pretty sick. Let's try it one more time. So we're gonna do a 25 mile per hour roll. Clutch in, give it a quick yum, 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 yeah. Oh, holy sh did I just wheelie? I think I just wheelie. Completely by accident, of course. I wonder. Perhaps if I don't have as much wheel speed, maybe in second gear. Dude, this thing picks the front tire up off the ground. That's so crazy. <laughs> All right, can we get one more little... Yep, yep, yep. Why did it cut power? Why did... I have my traction control off. I don't know why bikes do that. I had a Harley Davidson Road Glide do that to me also, whenever I had traction control turned off. Maybe I didn't click it into gear all the way. Maybe that's the issue. Another little feature highlight about this bike. It does have self-canceling turn signals. That's pretty cool. What else can we get in here and play around with while not losing too much focus on the road? Uh, yeah, so we have GPS, music, phone connectivity, ride. We can see our bike information as well. We got 202 degrees on the engine temperature right now going at slow speed. That'll probably come down as we get moving and flow more air over the radiator. It's 77 degrees outside. We can see our average fuel economy. We can see our available range based on that fuel average. And yes, that average right now does say 20 mpg, but that will go up the more miles that we put on the bike. It's only got about eight miles of data to go off of right now, and a lot of that has been low speed, stop, go traffic, and uh, a little bit of playing around in the meantime. What is this Yahoo doing? Here, go the f around. moron so like i said earlier even at 70 miles per hour i can drop it down into third and probably even second yeah i'm in second gear going 60 70 miles per hour we can just lay into it That was, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I should say how fast that was. That was pretty quick. 
But what I should say is that because of those extra tall gears and the ability to make passes at speed like that and ramp this bike up, you're gonna be more than suited to go out and conquer the highway. All right, if you're a returning viewer, you know where we're at. If you're a new viewer, this is where we do our zero to 60 testing. These are the proving grounds of every motorcycle that we bring out here. Well, I guess that's not entirely true. It's more the proving grounds for me to see if I can properly ride this bike and get zero to 60 times that are competitive with what the journalists say. Because most of the time, those guys are professionals. So that's exactly what we're gonna try to do is get this bike from zero to 60 as quickly as possible. Three, two, one, go. 60. So what I have noticed about the Scout is that after about 7,000 RPM, there's a lot of vibration in the foot pegs. Not so much in the handlebars, it is present, but a lot in the foot pegs beyond, again, 7,000 RPM, a little bit in the seat as well. But anything below that, this engine is pretty smooth, and I don't think that you'll experience a lot of hand or leg or butt numbness riding in the saddle as long as you're keeping it below that threshold of RPM. Uh, one of my favorite features that they brought to Scout this year for some of the options that are available is cruise control. I'm a huge fan of cruise control because sometimes it's nice just to be able to get it to the speed that you want it to be set at and just have it hold it there for you. And I'm just cruising down the interstate now, kind of hanging out, rolling my wrists, observing my surroundings, making sure that everything is cool. Can't recommend a bike with cruise control enough and I thought it was overdue for the Scout to have that anyway. It's a cruiser. If you're going to label your bike as such, you should be able to do exactly what I'm doing and cruise on it, take it easy. I'm not saying you should take your hands off the bars, but it is nice, again, to be able to take one off and roll the wrist out that usually has to stay on the throttle to keep things alive. But yeah, look at that. Sixth gear, 23, 2400 RPM at 50 miles per hour. That's insane. What's even more insane is that I can go all the way down to first gear and I can be at that same mile per hour at 7,000 RPM. And the higher up I shift it, just the more smooth it gets. The ride modes definitely make a huge difference. Rain mode is so relaxed and gentle on the throttle opening and the power delivery. Standard mode is exactly what you want for your average trip. And sport mode really allows you to Get, get the beans when you give it the beans. At no point has weight become a concern for me on this motorcycle. While I'm moving, it feels weightless. It carries itself super well. Very impressed with it. And you might ask if this is worth the upgrade over previous generation Scouts. I will say that if you get the limited plus tech version with the upgraded dash and the cruise control, those two items alone, are worth the upgrade for the motorcycle if you just want a little bit more tech to enhance your ride. But if you're just coming from a base model Scout from the previous generation to a base model Scout of the new generation, I don't know that I would be able to justify telling you that it's worth it. Uh, here's a quick little side note about the mirrors. A lot of vibration at 4,000 RPM in the mirrors. Not the easiest to see out of. Uh, I didn't really check too much at those higher end RPMs, but I can only assume that it might get worse as you increase the RPM of the engine. But in terms of visibility and being able to see behind me, they're out so far. I'm, I'm not even catching like the outer shoulder of my body in these mirrors. I'm seeing everything behind me, zero issue. Awesome visibility out of the mirrors. Seating position's awesome. I gotta commend the seating position. I'm comfortable. I haven't complained once about my back or my wrists. Again, very commanding. Like, I'm in charge of this thing, dude. I am in charge of this bike. Shall we? Just one more time. <laughs> Woo! It cut power on me again, but I got a little squeak out of it. Okay, now we got to give our closing thoughts on the Indian Scout to determine whether or not you should be picking one of these up, who it's for, and, well, who it's not for.
Well, 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 Indian Scout, here we are at the end of our day together, and what have I got to say about you? Let's start with the not so good first. Obviously, there's a lack of storage on this motorcycle. You have nowhere to put anything, however, there are bags available, so if you want to spend a little bit more money, you can fix that problem. The suspension is not the most forgiving. The front is okay, but the rear three inches of travel leaves a little left to be desired in terms of plushness and how it soaks bumps up underneath of you. I did feel a few times where I hit a couple potholes on my ride and got a little bit of a, a spine buster, if you will. But we are gonna sacrifice some suspension travel to achieve this beautiful silhouette. So we can't fault it too hard for that, but that is one drawback. Another is the ground clearance. It's only like 4.4 inches, so uneven surfaces you do risk bottoming out and you can't really take it down any treacherous roads without worry of that happening but well, we can't fault it for that either because well it's a cruiser made for the streets the weight figure of the motorcycle is rock solid 548 pounds and while it does carry that weight super well indian does market this bike to beginner level ish riders and i don't know if hopping on a bike this heavy would be super suitable because at the end of the day, it's still half of a thousand pounds. And once you get past a point of no return and you lay it over, it's heavy and you're gonna have trouble picking it back up. So that's something else to consider for sure. The price tag on the Indian Scout is pretty large, especially on the Sport Scout Limited Plus Tech like I'm riding today. This bike is 15199 starting MSRP as it sits. The base model Scout, like the cheapest I could find, was 12999 so $13,000 for a Indian Scout bobber is what that was. And that's a pretty basic bike with very minimal tech features and no cruise control either. I feel there's some other cruiser options out there that bring similar value to the table, maybe not similar horsepower numbers, and maybe that's what you pay for with this bike, but that's definitely one drawback of it is price. It's expensive, but you are paying a premium for a premium name brand. So if you can't afford it, simply just do not buy it. The vibration in the foot pegs was a bit of a downer once you had the engine screaming past 7,000, though you won't be living life up there a ton of the time on an Indian Scout because again you're more focused on cruising and not going out and riding super hard it is still a bit of a downer to feel that much vibration in my feet past 7,000 rpm and I guess we could also say that the handling is a bit lazy and it's a little difficult to get used to but again it's a cruiser we can't really fault it too much for that I'm just kind of nitpicking here looking for things to talk about with you guys and mention and I, I guess I can probably stop it there for the negatives. For all of those reasons, you could probably say goodbye, Mr. Indian Scout. Now for the positives, though. Uh, with the selectable ride modes, this is one thing I didn't hit on super hard. But the selectable ride modes, rain, standard, and sport found in your full-color TFT dash makes this bike much more accessible to a wider variety of riders who are going to be able to tone it down a little bit and go at their pace learning the bike before they jump into sport mode, crack it open, and really experience what the Scout is capable of. And the traction control and ABS systems are going to help you kind of find your rider limits. Not that you should be trying to find those limits every time you go out, but it will provide you with a reminder of where those limits are at, and that can help you be a better rider on this machine. Comfort is awesome on the Indian Scout, and I think the silhouette is beautiful. So if you can have a bike that looks good and feels good, those are two awesome boxes to check in my book. So not only do those ride modes help the beginner riders kind of develop their riding career with the motorcycle, but experienced riders will really appreciate what this bike offers with 105 horsepower and 82 foot-pounds of torque. It is a very usable machine out in the streets. At no point did I feel like I had to close my throttle because it was almost too much power. It's enough power that you kind of just want to keep digging and digging and playing with the Indian Scout. It really is a fun ride. And although the suspension isn't amazing, the brakes do a really good job of providing you with confidence that you're gonna be able to stop in almost any situation where you might be coming in a little hot without you know, risking triggering the ABS system and not getting the most ideal pad contact for a, a full-blown panic stop. Another bonus to the Indian is a two-year unlimited mile factory warranty. I think that's pretty cool and Indian's basically saying, hey, ride this thing for two years as far as you want, as long as you want, as hard as you want. We're gonna keep you protected and under warranty for the entire period of your two years of ownership. I think that's pretty cool and not a lot of companies offer a, a warranty that's longer than one year. So kudos to Indian for that. 
and maybe we can use that to kind of justify some of the pricing structures that they have on their bikes and why you do pay a premium. And the last thing that I want to hit on is styling for the good side of things. I think it's got that classic muscular American silhouette that cruisers are known for, but it doesn't compromise or sacrifice on modern features and amenities that make bikes great from today's time. We can satisfy both sides of the spectrum. You know, the classical guys who don't want anything that's not too technologically advanced, while also meeting the desires, wants, and needs of the newer generation who does want that tech, but doesn't mind the looks of something like this. Overall, it's just really hard to fault this motorcycle, and I think there's way more good things to say about it than there are bad things to say about it. So for those reasons that I just listed, so to put a capper on things, if you guys want to secure an Indian Scout of your own and you want to check the inventory available at Big St. Charles Motorsports, they do offer financing. You can come test ride one. A couple things to keep in mind, no personal checks accepted, cashier's checks, wire transfer or cold hard cash baby or we can get you approved on financing something like this you're probably looking anywhere between three hundred dollars a month to as much as four hundred dollars a month depending on what kind of trim level you go for but hit my guys up it's big st charles motorsports here in st charles missouri they are the plug i think that's it let's go ahead and flip it to the outro and wrap this up Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of the video here with me. Just a couple of quick things before we get to the very end. First off, once more, I'm an affiliate for Revzilla. I'm an affiliate for Rurock Helmet. If you want to check out some of the gear that I was using in my video, you can find links for that in the description below. At some point, I'm going to be coming clean with you guys and taking the helmet off and finally speaking with you face to face. But there is some quid pro quo involved in that. I'm requesting 20,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel before I take the helmet off. Once I get there, that's when I'll come to you guys and we'll do this whole thing face to face moving forward. That's all I've got. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week. Please, ride safe.